Well, it's almost January 1st. Today is New Year's Eve and I am working frantically on all of my resolutions because to me, two of the best words in the English language are fresh start. And January is a fresh start, not only for us, but also for our gardens. So here's my question of the day. What resolutions, what gardening resolutions are you making for 2022? And I'm gonna share five of my garden resolutions with you. Tell me if any of them resonate, but make sure to share yours so that we can all benefit from your gardening experiences. So number one, I have talked about ad nauseum, and you have seen my little card up above probably more times than you care to about my new book, The Elegant and Edible Landscape. So obviously I've been pretty consumed with that topic and I realized that even though I wrote a book about it, I, I probably don't incorporate it as edibles into my landscape as much as I would like. And so that is my resolution number one. I'm going to incorporate a lot more edibles herbs, um, vegetables, really just whatever, fruits into my garden and try to incorporate them in practical and really beautifully um, beautifully staged ways. So you guys know, here's, here's one way to do that. You know I am a nut for topiary and I have a number of them and I'm, what I'm gonna try to do is not only have lots of topiary but more edible topiary and I want them to get really large. One thing I noticed is that I have so many, so many small plants, so many small topiary forms, and I really want to encourage them to get larger and have fewer but larger topiary specimens. These are beautiful rosemary ones, and you can see this one is even blooming right now. They're outside today because I'm going to give them one last water, but we've got a real cold blast finally coming in tonight, Stuart, and so I'm going to walk water these really, really well, and then they will go back inside. I'm also going to be using, I think, a lot more, I, I want to grow a lot more berries, and I haven't been, I haven't been as effective about that as I should be, and I'm going to incorporate a lot more of the, the edibles from the Southern Living Plant Collection, particularly the different kinds of berries into my landscape. In some cases, they can even be a substitute for boxwood. So I'm gonna do that this year and think about creative ways to use them. I think last year I was just in such of a recovery mode with all of the damage that we had to our gardens that I was a little bit shell-shocked and I was just basically trying to keep my head above water and try to restore the garden and its beauty. Next year, I hope we don't have any of those really extreme weather events this late winter, and I can work on some of the things that I'm more excited about. So that is my resolution number one, incorporate more edibles into my landscape. Well, here's my gardening resolution number two. Really good gardeners, the best gardeners, know that it's much more about the soil than it is about the plants. And I have been very negligent, very derelict as a gardener because I haven't paid as much attention to the soil recently as I would like. Now, in my defense, it's partly because I have so many things that self-seed and come up in the spring that it's hard for me often to top dress with a thick layer of mulch or compost or something that would really improve the quality of the soil because I'm concerned about smothering all of those tender seedlings. And in this long bed across from the potager, I've got so many, like Stuart right here, if you don't mind showing, I've got some poppy seedlings coming up. Now, if I just came in here as I would like to do and completely top dress this entire bed with a good one or two inches of mulch or really good compost, then I'm gonna smother some of those little seedlings. So that's always been kind of a dilemma for me. I would love for you guys to share 
uh, to share your experiences with improving the quality of your soil with soil amendments when you've got that as a problem. Historically, what I've done is whenever I plant something, I just kind of add additional compost and soil amendment in that area. But I think this year, particularly given how difficult last year was, that it's time that I bite the bullet, get maybe a half a truckload full of really, really good compost from the stockyards, and after the first flush of seedling bloom, after the larkspur blooms and after the poppies bloom, I'm gonna come back in here and I resolve to really top dress all of this with a good layer of compost and also other areas in the garden. So that is my resolution number two. I'm gonna pay a lot more attention to the integrity and the quality of my soil. I'm gonna feed the soil, not just my plants. Well, my number three resolution might be the most difficult one for me to keep. And that is I need to simplify and reduce the number of container plantings that I have. And a friend of mine once said she was going to needlepoint a pillow for me that said so many pots, so little time. Because every time I look at a plant, I can see its potential as a pot specimen. So it's really hard for me not to act on that early urge and put everything in a pot in a way that I think would be pleasing. But in terms of the totality of the landscape, it can begin to look really cluttered and overdone and too much of anything, even if it's a good thing, is simply too much. So this year, I'm gonna really reduce the number of my container plantings. I'm gonna try to have fewer but larger pots of container plantings. I'm gonna actually try to give away, oops, I'm speaking of too many pots, look, this one I can almost use as a seat, but I'm gonna probably give away some of my smaller ones because I just had to babysit too many small plants this year. And especially those in the smaller pots, I, I was just a slave to watering them, which means that I'm probably going to reduce the number of starts I have and, and, and reduce a number of the small topiary that I have. Um, so I'm really thinking through that and I'm going to be much more attentive to the vignettes that I create using container plantings. The other way I think I can do that is only have a large swath of container plantings a la Klaus Dalby whom I think has influenced all of us to want to have more color coordinated assemblages of container gardens with beautiful color, beautiful seasonal color. Um, but obviously I, I need to remember to just garden where I am. And I would challenge all of us to remember where we garden and whether or not so many containers has good garden fit. And so this year, I'm really gonna think through that. I'm gonna try to be a lot more disciplined. And I think I, and hopefully I will be rewarded with a much cleaner, less cluttered, more harmonious, pleasing look, which means to me that I will have more garden serenity and I won't always feel like I'm just constantly overlooking a pot that needs to be watered or a topiary that needs to be tended. Um, I'm also, I think, going to do what containers I do make, I think I'm going to have them be more streamlined and simple. I'm gonna do less combination uh, plantings where I would use a lot of different combinations in one pot and I'm gonna use them more singularly with larger pots with all one plant. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about. Maybe a little bit later, I'll share some of my ideas and some of my favorite gardening books for container gardens. And also, I, I think I'm, I'm gonna really try to think through how I organize my inspiration, my tear sheets, my books, that kind of thing, that compel me to garden in a certain way next year. And it's something that I talk a lot about in, in my book is for me, aspiration comes first where I, I see something that I aspire to, I'm then inspired by it and then motivated to carry it out. So that's kind of my thinking on that. Um, as I was descri describing that to Stuart, he said, you can BS better than anybody I know. 
<laughs> well, well, yes, I probably can, but that's kind of how my mind works. So let me know what your thoughts are on container plantings in general. Uh, but this year I am really going to simplify and reduce in terms of my resolution number three, really looking over my container gardens and how I express myself through them in my total landscape. Well, here is my perhaps most important resolution. My resolution number four is to do a complete review and assessment of my in-ground irrigation system. I do have an in-ground irrigation system. I don't keep it on automatic. I only use it manually so I know exactly when things are being watered and I try not to water unnecessarily. But I'm really reviewing all of it in terms of the location of my different sprinkler heads, the bubblers that are dedicated to different trees and shrubs, and also the mist heads that basically spray out and are the things that, that primarily water annuals and lower growing things. So now while the garden is bare of most of its foliage, I can more easily access my different sprinkler heads. I can see what is blocking them. So for example, in this case right here, I've got a large Siberian iris that's blocking this mist head, and I'm going to remove things that are blocking the mist heads to make them more effective. Some of them I might remove in their entirety or relocate them, but now is a good time to do it for a couple of different reasons. One, irrigation uh, people are really hard to get access to in the spring and in the summer when everybody is just mad about gardening, but not so much in the winter months. So if you're fortunate enough like I am to have a pretty mild winter, they can come in and they can do that kind of, of review and restorative work on your sprinkler system in the winter time. That way you are ready to rock and roll in the spring. I'm also going to look at all of my sprinkler heads and see which ones might need to be torqued just a bit or moved just a bit so I'm not wasting water that then goes down the driveway into the street or into the sewer. So I'm going to do that kind of inventory and review and assessment of my in-ground irrigation system all winter long and I would encourage you to do the same. We're in a drought right now. It's been extremely dry. I'm concerned that it's going to be dry going into what could be a difficult winter and then into spring. So it's most important to me that I take care of the watering system that I have in place and I'd encourage you guys to do it too. Let me know how you handle your own watering systems. Well, here's my resolution number five. You guys know that I can't keep from showing you all of my uglies in addition to my pretties. And my resolution number five is to beautify the forgotten places. I have a number of these areas in my garden, some of which uh, I didn't have until the really harsh winter we had last year. So some of you will recall that I had a probably 50 year old hedge of Manhattan Euonymus along this expanse. It had been there for a very long time and even though it may not have been my favorite plant, it did a wonderful job of obscuring and hiding this chain link front fence give me some privacy and provide kind of a pretty green backdrop. Well, it succumbed to those minus 12 degree temperatures we had last February. So I am now having to think about and restore this. I've shared some of this with you a little bit in the past and my thinking on it is actually still evolving, but it bothers me so much that I'm gonna make this a priority and look at different ways that I can make it look far more presentable. I have areas also on the west side of my house that abut up against my neighbor's drive that used to be just fine, but again, it lost some plant material from that Arctic blast last year. And I'm gonna try to really beautify that forgotten space. I think I'm just gonna use some gravel, some really tough plants that don't need to be irrigated and just make it look a lot more presentable, not only for me, 
but also for my neighbor who has to drive by that area every day when they park their car. So I'm going to try to be mindful of my neighbors and trying to beautify my forgotten spaces. I'd be anxious to know what kind of forgotten spaces you all have. It might be an area that's muddy and mucky right near where your faucet is. It might be an area near your trash can, but utilitarian areas can also be points that we can elevate and romance the ordinary. So that is my resolution number five. I am going to tackle hopefully before spring arrives managing and beautifying my forgotten spaces. And I've got one extra bonus resolution that I want to share with you. And here is my bonus resolution. And this is one that recurs on my list every single year. And that is to take better care of my tools, my pruners, try not to leave them out in the garden, lost and alone, um, and just better tool management starting with my favorite pruners. Now, actually, right now, all of my pruners, some of my shovels, all of a, a number of my hand tools, those have all gone away to be sharpened over the winter, sharpened, oiled, uh, just basically maintained. And first and foremost of all of my garden tools, you guys know, are my hedge pruners. And these are those wonderful Barnell hedge shears that I talk about all of the time. And in fact, I, I think I, I created a shortage almost of these on Amazon that were really very hard to find for a while and the price skyrocketed. And so many people, so many of you bought them. So I, I quit really, kind of sharing a link because I, I, I wasn't sure where to find them anymore. Well, since I started doing that, apparently an inventory is back in supply and you can now get them on Amazon again and you can probably find them other places, but I have found that the Amazon source is the least expensive one. So they are back on Amazon right now. Stuart is going to put a link. We will put a link in the description. And something else I'm gonna try to start doing is on my Instagram account, on my stories, I'm gonna always try to show the products that I'm talking about in my YouTube videos on Instagram in a story that has the link. That way, if you have trouble finding it in the description or in the link above that you'll be able to access it too. Obviously, if you're not following me on Instagram, I hope that you will because I also post there as well. And so that is my bonus resolution is to take care better care, be a better steward of not only my garden, but also my garden helpers. So there you go. Those are my resolutions for the start of 2022. Let's get our garden on. Well, I'm going to start something a little bit fun this year with the fashion du jour, my outfit of the day. And I want you guys to participate if you hold on this long to see what I'm wearing. So my outfit today, number one, my earrings. These are beautiful silver earrings that my husband brought me back from Peru even before we were married. So that's been, gosh, 32 years ago. And I still have them to this day, along with another couple of, of pairs. And I wear them very, very frequently. Um, my sweater is Joe Fresh from JCPenney. I don't even know if that brown brand is around anymore. This is really old. I've had it for years. This is one of my sleeveless white collar shirts. Um, my britches. My britches are from Anthropology. They're kind of a stretchy cord. My gardening boots are muck boots from Dover Saddlery. I love these. I believe they're still available and I've had these for years. They're probably my very favorite pair of boots. My bracelets are just an assemblage of different things. This one I got, for those of you that live in the Oklahoma City area, I got this at the French Cowgirl on Western. It's a shop that used to be there. And then I just have assortments of other inexpensive baubles. So I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start having not only a question of the day for the gardening segment, but also a question of the day for this fashion segment. So here is my question number one to start off this series. Do you guys like and or wear 
camo. Now I'm somebody who did not like it originally. I didn't jump on the camo bandwagon, but eventually I kind of came to it partly because I just love the fact that it really looks like nature. So I have started introducing a little bit more camo into my outfits and my attire. So there is my, out, my outfit question of the day for you guys. Do you like camo? Do you wear it? Or are you a detractor? There's no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious. So there you go. There's my outfit of the day.